Hi guys, Tarantula Noob, uh, welcome back to my channel. This is a culmination of about three months worth of videos, um, which is now going to show the entire process of mating um, and incubating uh, Carabina versicolor. Uh, right from the initial introduction of the male and female, all the way up to selling the slings. Um, so, Back on the 19th of December uh, 2018, I introduced my male to my female. And as you can see, or are about to see, it went quite well. Um, I have edited these videos quite a lot, obviously, to try and save time. If you want to see the full-blown uh, videos you can go back on my channel which will have the original commentary and sound um, but as you can see here the male is on the bottom the female is on the top he is going to crawl underneath her pretty much as low as he can get he's going to try and lift her up so that he can get to her furrow uh, the epigastric furrow with his pedipalp uh, so he needs to lift her up it amazes me how they do this on the side of the tank. Um, although, spoiler, he does actually fall off in a minute. Um, but yeah, he's lifting her entire body weight up and supporting his own body weight while he's using his front legs and pedipalp. So he's doing all of that with his back legs. Um, it's quite amazing to me. Um, but yeah, so they started tapping to each other. I put their tanks next to each other. Uh, about a week before um, I could hear the male tapping not sure whether the female tapped back or not but I could definitely hear the male tapping um, so they had got time to get used to each other there we go, fell off um, they had got time to get used to each other so they repositioned uh, this is one of the better shots to kind of explain, not that you believe it because I'm looking at the lid of a woman enclosure but in a minute it is um, you can see his pedipalp underneath. Keep an eye on that pedipalp. So he only has the one. But you can see he gets right into her furrow and then he hooks back into it. And you can see he's hooked in now. And as he pulls his palp down, it actually pulls her abdomen down. That's how you can tell that he's really in there. That is a successful insertion. And in a minute he will slide it forwards and out. There we go. He unhooks it. So that's what you're looking for, for a successful insertion. Just because you get a successful insertion does not mean you're going to get a, a successful egg sac or an egg sac at all. Um, but obviously, step one in the process, that's what you're looking for. So my guys repositioned again, uh, went for round three. Um, so again, he's underneath her at the moment, lifting her up away from the cork bark. You can't see much. You can just see him tapping her on the head at the moment. Um, not sure why they do that, but he, he did that almost every time. But yeah, he's, he's busy working away underneath. Um, but as you can see, they, they don't show aggression to each other, or at least mine didn't, uh, which is great. So, again, they repositioned for attempt number four. And again, from the side, you can really see how much he has to lift her up and push her back to get right underneath. And I mean, she's being very receptive um, and lifting her, lifting her own legs up out of the way. And you can kind of see underneath, you can see his pedipalp. But again, that's what you're looking for. She's just lifting her own legs. She's, um, she's having a whale of a time. But yeah, so this was attempt number four, did I say? Lost track already. And the final attempt... Um, and he's on top in this shot you can kind of tell because again her legs are in the air and are about to be even more so 
you can see his pedi palp underneath fidgeting away doing everything he needs to do she just leans back and lets him get on with it um a little bit of a better shot you can see the uh is it the emboli the uh shiny black bit on the end of his pedi palp which has the kind of hook on it that he inserts And then, yep, yeah, that is the end of the uh, the first breeding attempt. At this stage, I think he realised his tanks were empty, uh, and he needed to go away and recuperate. Um, which again, they can do. They can go away. They'll build another sperm web. They'll top back up, and they'll be ready to go. So, this was approximately. And I say approximately because I didn't write the date down, which is very annoying. Um, 32 days later. Um, actually, no, I lie. It's 32 days after she laid the sack. It was about 35 to 40 days, I think, before she laid a sack. And then I left the sack with the mom for 32 days. I chose to pull the sack um for a couple of reasons verses especially are very good you can just leave them with the mom um until the slings hatch out and a lot of people will do that i didn't for a few reasons i didn't think the enclosure was going to be sling proof and i did not want them escaping um i knew at some point you have to get the slings out of there which means you have to completely dismantle and destroy her enclosure to catch all of those slings um i didn't want to do that i was also starting to get paranoid that because it was my first attempt were the temperatures right was the humidity right i didn't want anything to go wrong with the sack i didn't want to be opening um or not opening the sack but i didn't want to be leaving the sack to find out that they, they dried out uh, or they'd got too humid and they'd gone moldy um so I pulled the sack. I uh, have to admit, and I said it in the original video, it actually made me feel terrible. I felt terrible taking that away from the mother. Um, so if you are going to do this for the first time, just be aware that you might have a little kind of pang of conscience kick in. Um, I wasn't expecting it, but I certainly did. And there is the golden egg. That's what you're after. So a nice, healthy-looking sack difficult to tell from the outside though so um, you have to open it so here's the sack obviously I've sped this up if you want to go back and see the original uh, reactions and things then uh, the video is on my channel somewhere so yeah homemade incubator everybody's seen how to make these I'm sure if not type it in tons of people have done them lunchbox cut the lid off pair of tights water in the lunchbox that's pretty much it so yeah open up the egg sack be very careful don't cut into the sack without making sure you can see where you're cutting first you don't want to be cutting these guys up um as you can see lots of wriggling going on i think in the original video i actually referred to these as eggs with legs um they are actually well past that stage um as you'll see when I tip them out. And yeah, just be very gentle. Um, I appreciate I'm saying that as I'm tipping them upside down on their head. But yeah, when, when you're moving them around, try not to pick them up. Um, if you do, yeah, just very gentle because they can literally just pop at this stage. Um, and you don't want to be losing things just to carelessness. You can see a couple of bad eggs in there, the darker, smaller ones which have dried. Uh, they are obviously infertile. Um, and you can also see a couple of clumps that are sticking together. But apart from that, they were mainly healthy. So again, obviously, sped this up for you guys. You want to go through and you want to clean everything up. Um, remove everything that looks bad um, all the little bits of shed all the infertile eggs anything like that 
you don't want to leave anything in here that could potentially risk the good um you know the slings that are, are gonna do well um i had as you can see two clumps there's one on the left one on the right which i'll um pull apart in a moment this kind of cements the fact that i was what or why i pulled the sack um i am almost certain that if i didn't pull the sack guaranteed those two clumps would have died and potentially when they did they would have then rotted and the, the entire sack could have gone so this is now the 28th of march and as you can see these things are basically very cute mini spiders uh, there's no other way of saying it they have giant asses and kind of translucent legs they started off with very light bodies uh, like that one and then they do get darker they get darker as they get closer to molting uh, and as you can see if you shine a torch on them when you're filming them they all start squirming around um, but yeah they're they're just really cute and I used to watch them for hours they are amazing little things they're just perfect little spiders with giant asses. And the little spinnerets sticking out the bottom. Uh, um, so that's just cute. I don't know how people can't say it's not. But they do get cuter. Because these are verses. So you know they're going to be stunning. But yeah. I checked on these. Well I was paranoid. I checked on these several times a day. I checked on them every morning when I got up. As soon as I got in from work, I'd check on them. I'd check on them again in the evening, and I'd check on them before I went to bed. Um, you don't need to do that. You just don't. But I was paranoid, um, and also fascinated. So, all right. So, that was the 28th of March. This is now the 12th of April. So, this is two weeks later. You can see that they've all got very dark. Uh, their abdomens have actually started to shrink. They're not huge giant balls like they were. They, they have shrunk down. And obviously as you can see. They've started to molt some. It still amazes me. How something that size. Can come out. Of something that size. I don't, I don't understand how they're in there. It, it just baffles me. My mind cannot comprehend how legs that big and fat and long are currently inside legs that skinny and small um but yep yeah, so you can see a little bunch there they're still very pale because they're so freshly molted but you can see they are now furry and blue which is what you want in a versus limb uh yeah so there's a patch in the middle that are all huddling together um, and there's three over here which aren't as pale so these have dried out slightly not that one um, so yeah you can see they're gorgeous blue colors and you can see there's sheds next to them so you've got the, the fully hardened dried blue ones the jet black ones which are yet to molt and the pale blue ones which are they're kind of freshly molted yeah exciting times and it's, it made me so happy to see them molt it really did because you know now they're, they're kind of they're not out the risky stage because they're slings at the end of the day but you know and two days later so this is now the 14th of april they have nearly all molted we've got two we've got three there that one didn't make it and I'm pretty sure the two in the corner didn't make it either. No, they didn't. Which is a shame because that one had already molted and then died while molting. Um, I will say though, if you are going to breed tarantulas or anything really, um, you have to expect a certain mortality rate. They don't, especially with spiders. They have huge numbers of babies because a lot of them don't make it. Um, I actually had quite a good success rate 
I really did. Um, I had a few infertile eggs um, and then slings that died. I think, well, I've got, what, three there. Um, I think I took one out before that stage. So you're talking four out of about 70 or out of about 74. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy with that. I had a very good success rate. So, yeah, you want to go through... Um, even at this stage, and clean up um, everything, pretty much. Anything that can cause a problem, get it out. So all of their sheds, obviously they're shedding, there's a lot of excess shed or waste shed, um, or malts rather, not shedding. Um, take it out. So you don't want it causing any issues. I didn't actually realise at the time, but you can see they've done a little film of web which you don't need to take out, but I was trying to get rid of the, uh, the malts, which was all, all stuck to it. But yeah, keep them clean, which is another reason I used white tights. Uh, it was a very fine um, denier, they call it, I think. So they were very um, kind of thick, smooth. They were actually my daughter's um, tights, like school tights, um, but not woolly ones. So they, they were perfect, um, but yeah, they're white so you can see if it's dirty. Um, it does come out a little bit funky on camera though. So this one, unfortunately, is stuck in its shed. Um, it has been for at least two days, so I intervened. Normally I wouldn't, but it's not going to, if it hasn't done it in two days, it's not going to do it. Um, now, I'm off camera working here, but I left this bit in. Look at the one on the right. See him disappear out of shot? He will now come back, and I left this in because I found it amazing how one dickhead can cause so much chaos. So off he goes for a wander, and he comes back, and he just starts a little chain reaction. Everybody was nice and cosy and settled and chill. And then one dude just ruins it but I do love the way that they all walk so I'll have that in right this is now the 17th of April so they molted on the 12th um, so this is five days later I thought I would see if one was showed any interest um, in food I got some um, is it N1 crickets Tiny little things, and as you can see, pounce. Great feeding response. Um, they're ready to go. So, yeah, that's it. They're ready to eat, which is a great sign. So, pretty much, yeah. whack a load of uh, crickets in there. This tub is within another tub, uh, so the crickets can't get out, but they can jump down so that they won't pester the. the uh, spiders too much um, but I didn't mind putting too many in as it were because I know that they could just jump down um, and they wouldn't cause an issue yeah feeding frenzy time feeding them was so satisfying although I did end up with a house full of escaped crickets but Just watching them all. Some weren't interested. Some were greedy and had several. Like that one at the top. He, he's got two in his mouth at the moment. Um, but yeah, it was great to watch. And every time I watch this back, I see different takedowns um, in different bits of the screen. Not all of them ate. I did see, um, you know, quite a few weren't interested, which is fine. I'll just try again in a couple of days. Um, if you're keeping them communally like this, there's no way you're going to know which ones eat and which ones don't. Um, if you pop them up individually, then obviously you can keep track. Um, potentially, you can actually tongue feed them. 
Um, but if you think I'm tongs feeding 70 odd uh, versus slings, you are you are mistaken. So chuck them all in the tub. They can help themselves. And most of them did. I don't see many people doing this, but I thought I would add a water dish. Um, now they're still in their incubator, so humidity is still really high. You know, underneath these tights, it's full of water. Um, but now I know that they're eating, then that means they're safe to drink. So why not? Really, I, I didn't see it doing any harm. Um, for those of you that don't know, slings won't drown; they float. Um, so it's it's not an issue. Don't put sponges or stones or anything else in the water bowl just let them do what they would do so yeah i sped this bit up a little bit but just so you can see how they all walk around i love that the way aversi walks is uh it's fantastic i think they have to be my favorite type of sling without shadow of a doubt so, yeah, anyway, I was quite glad that I put the water dish in because there was a queue at the water bowl. Um, at one point, one got pushed in and swam across and climbed back out. Um, so, again, you really don't need to worry about them drowning. Right, this is now the 21st of April. Um, so, they had their first feed on the 17th. I fed them again on the 20th um, and again most of them ate can't guarantee they all did um, but yeah so they've had two feeds um, it is now time to rehouse them and um, well send them on their way to their new home um, if you intend to breed spiders you need to think about what you're going to do with the slings um, if you have the room and the time to keep them all, um, great. I don't, I wish I had the room to keep and the time to keep, you know, 70 odd versus slings. I genuinely would if I could, um, but I don't. I also don't have the time or the patience to sell these things, you know, £10 a sling. You've got to go buy your boxes and your tubs and you got to go to the post office like every day that someone orders one because you don't they don't want to be waiting around i am not going to get in the business of selling spiders um to people because hey that's what you know portsmouth tarantulas spider shop so many legs they do it for a living um so my opinion is you know let them do it they they're good at what they do um, which is what I did. I contacted Scott at Portsmouth Tarantulas. Um, I mean, I was around there anyway, and I mentioned the fact that I had verses, and I was going to say, you know, would you like to uh, have them? Um, and before I even said that, I think him and his missus both went, oh, verses, oh, you know, let us have first refusal. Um, so obviously happy to do that. Um, so, yeah, we arranged for him to have 65 in total um, for store credit. Thank you very much. Um, and, yeah, so this is basically me going through. I have two pots at the side. One for pots and tarantulas and one for me to keep. I was keeping, and the reason I was doing this so slowly, and don't worry, I will skip it. I was checking them all first. I didn't want to give um, Scott any like gimpy ones or, or anything like that. So I was checking them all out, making sure they've got all their legs, they look healthy. And if they were, they went in the Portsmouth Tarantula tub. If there was anything wrong with them, um, they went in my keeping tub. Um, and I can, you know, have them at home. And if they die, they die. That's not you know a huge loss to me that sounds horrible but what i mean is i didn't want to sell ones that i thought might potentially die 
Um, so yeah, I started putting them in two at a time, kept a little piece of paper at the side with a little tally, um, plonked them all in. They are stunning little spiders. And there you can see I put one in the gimp box. A couple of escapees, as always. But overall, these things were so well behaved. It really was good. They like to group together, um, as you can see. And then you give them a prod and they all scatter. But yeah, so just picking them up two at a time into the tub. All I did in that tub is um, a damp paper towel at the bottom, um, purely because they were going to Portsmouth Tarantulas later that day. So it didn't need it didn't need substrate and you know cork bark and all that sort of stuff because he's probably going to rehouse them. Um, he might choose to keep them communally. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, there is 65. It doesn't look it, does it? But there is 65 gorgeous Carabiniverse colour slings. Perfect. So that means these are for me to keep. Um, or, more to the point, to give away. So, scooping up the last ones. And Gimpy, remember the one with the bad shed? Um, he still has very bent legs. He spent his time on the side. I don't know if the others, um, whether, I don't know why, but he kept separating himself from all the others. Um, if we have a look, you can see his legs, he's hardened, but his legs have hardened, all bent. Um, he hasn't eaten yet because I was trying to feed him separately. Um, he can walk uh, in a kind of fashion, um, but it's not great. Right, all I was doing at this stage is just potting around, cleaning up. Um, I wanted to show you something at the end, which will make sense. Um, but in the meantime, while you're staring at an out of focus, dirty enclosure, um, I thought I would talk about the giveaway that I mentioned at the beginning. So if you would like to be considered or entered for the chance to win some of the Carabiner Versicolor slings that you have just seen from start to finish, what I'd like you to do is if you could share my video, that would be fantastic. Um, what I'm going to do is draw a winner when I get to 250 subs. I know that's not a lot, guys. I'm on about 205 at the moment. I can't really promote my channel on social media and things at the moment. Um, kind of personal reasons. Uh, so if you guys could share my video, that would be fantastic. Um, and then leave a comment down below. Say whatever you like, but leave a comment to let me know that you want to be entered into the draw. When I get to 250 subs, everybody that's commented will be put into a number generator or names in a hat. Um, and then I will draw one winner um, who will receive, uh, what, three Carabiner slings. Um, which by that time should be nice and healthy and fat. Um, for those of you that don't want to wait or don't win head on over to Portsmouth Tarantulas um, because as I've already said they have uh, or had 65 uh, which I believe are for sale on their website already so they go like hotcakes so if you are interested and don't win head on over to Portsmouth Tarantulas but yeah if you want to enter leave a comment down below Share it if you can. Sharing it just means we're going to get to 250 subs quicker so you don't have to wait to win. Um, yeah, guys, really appreciate it. Right, now the point that I was actually going to make about the uh, horrible, dirty enclosure. I said earlier that I kept it pristinely clean, and I did. But look at it. This is just from two lots of feeding. It's disgusting. Now, that's not too much of an issue. But what is, and I can see from the side, um, is the water underneath. Again, I checked every day. This was not like this last night, or the night before I filmed. 
this happened overnight. All I can assume is some dirt has made its way down through the um, tights into the water. All of a sudden exploded with, I don't know what it is, mould, mildew, algae, whatever it is. But that cannot be good for spiderlings. Now, I spotted it straight away because I check it every day. And I'm rehousing them today anyway, so it's completely irrelevant. But if they weren't ready to go yet and they were staying in there, keep an eye on your water. Do water changes. Right, well, that's pretty much it, guys. This is what I ended up with. So I have, I think it was six, maybe seven. Um, a couple of gimps and then some good healthy ones. And the rest are heading on over to Scott. And Portsmouth Tarantulas again go over to their website and have a look these are the ones that he will have for sale oh, they're gorgeous anyway thanks for watching guys give us a like give us a subscribe catch your next video